The following video is a sample from the VIP Masterclass series. If you'd like to learn more about the VIP Masterclass series, I have provided links in the description below. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Welcome to the VIP Masterclass series. I'm Josh Wright, and today's episode is dedicated to a new member, Cynthia, and she asks the following. This is kind of a cool request. Um, and it can certainly help any of you, regardless of what level you're at, beginner or professional. Um, I had a great time coming up with the solutions that I've personally used in my life to answer her question. She said, full disclosure, I actually play pedal harp, but have learned so much from the VIP videos and your other videos. I truly appreciate what you do. Thank you. I played piano as a youngster. The strings of the harp are similar to the white keys of the piano. The seven pedals, one for each note of the musical scale, change the pitch between flat, natural, and sharp. When specific harp music titles weren't available, I worked from piano music. I, that is mind-blowing to me. I have a lot of respect for you that you're able to apply all of these uh, issues from piano to the harp. That's really cool. So she said, my VIP question, I have a very difficult time staying focused when I'm repeatedly practicing the same music and sections. My mind wanders. I seem to have a pattern of learning a piece about 70% and then I'm ready for another challenge. Any thoughts on how to stay focused? Um, many thanks and all the best to you and your family, Cynthia. So thank you, Cynthia. I truly appreciate your request. And like I said, I had a great time coming up with this list. So the first thing is I want you to set goals long-term to short-term. So I want you to say, I wanna have this piece done in four months. Okay, if I have to have it done in four months, let's maybe say the last three weeks of that fourth month are gonna be just polishing, okay? Or it, you can set a longer goal, I don't care what your goal is, but be realistic, but stretch yourself a little. Don't overly stretch yourself so you're always failing. You wanna set goals that are realistic but stretch you a little bit, okay? And I would work backwards towards today and say, okay, if I'm gonna do this, I have to have this section and this section and this section by these dates. Okay, in order to do that, I need to be doing four measures per day um, and let's just call it 16 measures per week. Even if I'm practicing seven days a week, I don't wanna overextend myself. I'm gonna do four measures a day. Or maybe it's four pages a day if you're a really fast learner and it's a huge concerto. I don't care what it is, but sh set goals uh, long-term back to the short-term. A lot of people just set short-term goals for the day and they say, I just wanna get through this today. And then they're kind of wandering for months and months because each day they set a new goal and the goals don't tie together and then they don't account for how much review they're going to need and it can just become a big mess. Okay, number two, I want you to imagine uh, the difference between my wife and I when we're preparing dinner and it, causes, uh, it calls for um, lemon juice, okay? So she just cuts the lemon in half and uh, then she puts it in a little lemon squeezer, squeezes it once and tosses the lemon. Being OCD, I, I take it and I quarter it precisely. I can't have the rind going, you know, vertically this way. It, it's gotta be, it's gotta almost be like a little pyramid, like how I cut it in, in fourths. And then I put it upside down into the juicer, squeeze it as hard as I can, adjust it a little, squeeze it again. And then I take it out and I hand squeeze it and I can get like twice as much juice out of it. And she's like, oh, you're such an idiot. But anyway, <laughs> the second way is how I want you to treat your music. Um, the reason I bring that up is so much of us, so me included, so many of us uh, just surface uh, squeeze the juice out of the, the passage. Uh, so if you're playing a very expressive piece, such as uh, I was demonstrating this, this same week Raf for Raphael with the Opus 27 number two. Don't just do. Think like, what does this mean to me? And is that as gentle as can be. I don't want to get sappy and cheesy with how I'm explaining this, but this really does make a huge difference. And you might think, oh, I'm a beginner. I don't need to get into this much detail. I'm, tr I'm telling you, trust me, the more you get into this, the faster your progress is going to be. Okay, uh, number three of 14 uh, that I have come up with here is take frequent breaks. Now, a break doesn't have to be away from the piano. It absolutely can. You can go get a drink of water, you can go to the bathroom, you can lift some weights, you can do whatever it takes uh, to reset your mind. Most of the time, I just take a break with another piece 
um, that's much easier than the one I'm really tackling. So if I'm working on a very tough concerto, I might play the Volados uh, arrangement of the Rachmaninoff cello sonata, just the first couple pages, because I have them pretty good. That's a really tough piece, actually. But it's just very relaxing um, music, something that just puts my mind at ease and kind of resets me, and I'm ready to go again. So taking frequent breaks, uh, there's no science as to how um, frequent your breaks need to be. Uh, well, I'm sure they've done experiments, but for me, every 20 to 30 minutes, a, a quick break makes a huge difference, especially when I'm teaching. I noticed that if I put like a little 15 minute break every hour or two, I am so much more focused as a teacher in my lessons rather than stacking up three or four hours at a time. Just that little 15 minute break every hour or two, I'm ready to go again. So just taking short breaks like that. So space out your practice if at all possible. Um, I think you said in one of the paragraphs I did not read that you were retired. Um, living in a beautiful place that I won't mention just to keep you anonymous. But anyway, uh, you know, go look out at the beach or something um, and just breathe in the fresh air. What One thing, this is totally out of the blue, but I just remembered it. I remember I was listening to this podcast and a guy said, one thing I do to reset my mind is I just look out into the distance. I try to look at a distant thing and I started doing that. And what it does is it gives you an awareness of how small you are in the world. Um, and so uh, it it widens your perspective, and this is going to get into uh, another point here in a minute, but um, when you actually reset your mind by creating an awareness of your surroundings, it actually helps you reset and refocus because we can get so deep into these little rabbit holes that just keep going on forever and ever. And we can't get out of them and then we're frustrated. I remember when I couldn't get the double thirds a couple of years ago, I was like, I'm a complete failure. I I suck at the piano and my wife's like, um, stop, this is so annoying. Why are you doing this? She's a great pianist herself. She's like, think of all that you, you can play. You just played rock three. I was like, I don't care if I just played rock three. I wanna play the double thirds etude and I can't do it with the fingering I wanna do it with. I can do it with this other fingering. She's like, you are nuts, but it's so easy to get sucked into those mindsets where you're totally lost. Okay, number four, use part of your practice sessions to listen to professional recordings. That is a great way to gather ideas and try to listen to as many as you can. Number five, record yourself and do not be afraid or uh, to use your practice time listening back uh, to yourself playing. A lot of people, I remember when I was younger, I said, I can't possibly record myself. I've got so much to do in these two and a half hours. I can't justify taking you know half of my practice session to be listening back and i'll tell you what i invested when i was like 12 years old i think i saved like 500 bucks um just mowing lawns and stuff and i bought a really nice back then recording setup um today it would be total junk but um and i just wore that thing out and that if I can think of one thing that helped me get great at piano, it was recording myself. Today, you can just use your iPhone and it's just as good as <laughs> that recording I used to have. You could buy a little external mic for your mic uh, for your iPhone, or you can get something, if, you, if funds are not an issue, get something like this. This is an AKG 414 uh, version two mic. I think it's like C414 version two. Um, and then it's running through an Apollo twin Duo. I think Apollo just came out with an updated version of it. And just run that into your computer, into GarageBand if you have a Mac or um, whatever other recording software you'd like to use. And this gives you amazing. This, our Christmas album was recording, recorded with this mic and one other mic. Um, and that can just be so fun to listen to yourself. It can also be completely humiliating. Um, for the most part, it's humiliating, so just brace yourself. But uh, it gets you better quicker because it brings an awareness of what you need to work on faster than any other way of practicing. Mental practice at the piano. So what I mean by that, this is how I learned the second movement of Rock Two or Rock Three, Rachmaninoff Third Concerto. Um, I would stare at a passage try to play it back in my mind, then play it back on the piano. Muscle memory helps more than we know. So a lot of times we can just have it here in the muscles, but it's not up here in the brain. If you can play it through in your brain and then play it uh, with your muscle memory, it works great. And you can listen to that Rock 3 recording. I worked so hard on that piece and the second movement was solid. So I know it works. Uh, mental practice away from the piano with your music 
and then toggle with and without recording. So what I mean by that is go sit at your kitchen table, bring your score, and just kind of sing through it in your mind, like just uh, as if you're playing through that music in your mind. That will help so much. And then listen to a recording, and then go back and try to imagine yourself playing that uh, in your mind just as beautifully as that person did. It really helps. Uh, number eight. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you would like to join the VIP Masterclass series and have instant access to our library of over 150 videos, just click on the link in the description below. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.